All right, my name is Ryan Hall. I'm the Communications Director for the Montana Electric Cooperatives Association. Uh, I wanted to thank you for uh, coming here today for our press conference on the upcoming Greater State Sage Grouse Management Plan uh, hearings. It'll be starting tomorrow night. Uh, we're going to outline kind of our feelings and positions on the uh, draft plan today uh, for you folks. We're going to have uh, Assistant General Manager of Mecca, Gary Weems, and Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative Manager, Brandon Whitman. Uh, first will be Gary. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you also for coming. I want to start off by making it perfectly clear that uh, the Electric Cooperatives of Montana support the concept of a state management plan for sage grouse. And we applaud the governor for taking the initiative to uh, go to work on developing a state plan. Uh, you know, a state plan is a, more of a local control type of approach, and that's a far cry better than the alternative, which would be a federal listing of sage grouse as a threatened or endangered species. And uh, that, we believe, could very well, a federal listing could very well be devastating for our co op ratepayers, our member owners. Um, we decided to hold this press conference because um, we as electric cooperatives in Montana have more at stake than any electric utilities when it comes to sage grouse management. We've got more at stake because we have a lot of power line in sage grouse country. Also, our costs of delivering power to our member owners are generally higher than those of other electric utilities. And that's because of the remoteness of our locations where we're serving as well as the sparsity of the populations that we, to which we deliver power. And then finally, we decided to hold, we have more at stake than other electric utilities because of who is impacted when it comes to sage grouse. It's our owners of our utilities. It's our ratepayers, And those are the people that are gonna have to pay every single dime of increased cost that could occur if there is too restrictive of a, a plan for managing sage grouse in Montana. Um, our basic position on the state plan is, first of all, it's more restrictive than we had hoped it would be, but it's got some flexibility in it now, the draft plan, and so we think we can make it work. We think it's livable. Uh, might need to be tweaked here and there, but we do think overall that it's uh, got possibility for uh, as far as being able to make work out there in sage grouse country. Also, but our, our basic concern here, our biggest worry about this plan is what's it going to do to rates? And we think if it's made more restrictive than it is now, the draft plan, that it could easily drive up our rates. And those rate increases could be significant for our rate payers, our consumer owners. And uh, so what we're uh, urging the governor to do is to stand firm, to resist pressure, to make it more restrictive. We believe that it accomplishes the objectives of the, of the plan right now, the way it's written, that it, number one, it does conserve sage grouse population, and that it also that it will preclude listing of the sage grouse as a threatened or endangered species. So with that, I'll turn it over to Brandon. Thank you. Good morning. I am uh, Brandon Whitman. I'm a uh, native Montanan. I was uh, born and raised in Montana and I've uh, worked here all my life. I am the uh, CEO and general manager of Yellowstone uh, Valley Electric Cooperative uh, based out of Huntley. Huntley's just about 10 miles uh, east of Billings, uh, straight down Interstate 94. Um, I'd like to start with uh, talking about um, how electric cooperatives have uh, a long-standing history of being good stewards uh, to the environment. And we have a, a unique issue before us now, um, and it, it's sort of a balance between reasonable economic development and the protection, um, ensuring the protection of sage grouse uh, population. Federal court has, uh, has told the, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that they need to make a decision on whether the sage grouse uh, should be um, protected under the Endangered Species Act and 
the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service needs to make this decision by September of 2015. Um, we think, electric cooperatives think, uh, that such a decision um, to enlist the sage grouse would carry strong potential for preventing economic development in Montana. Let me start by giving a little bit of background about uh, co-ops in general. Um, there are 25 co-ops in the state of Montana. The co-ops cumulatively have about uh, just about 55,000 miles of uh, electric power lines across the state. They serve in every county, serve power to customers in every county across the state of Montana. Um, as you can guess, uh, serving in such vast areas as the state of Montana, and especially in the rural areas, um, we are, uh, our, our density, our meters per mile, are far less than that of uh, the investor-owned utilities in the state. In fact, our density or meters per mile uh, average 2.9 meters per every mile of power line, whereas the largest investor in killing the state is over 14 meters per mile. And of course, the cost to deliver power in those uh, large expansive areas is much higher. And so uh, our revenue uh, is also much lower per mile of line, and our revenue average is about $5,700 per mile of line. And the revenue for the largest investor in utility averages over 23,000, actually about $23,600 uh, per mile. Um, we are cost-based, all of electric cooperatives across the state are cost-based uh, electric utilities. And so any, uh, any, our members, uh, as owners, must bear the burden of uh, any increased cost to serve them. However, we do recognize uh, the need to be proactive when it comes to protecting sage grouse. And that is why we endorse uh, the power uh, line development provisions in the Greater Sage Grouse Core Area Protection Plan as issued uh, in the state of Wyoming by Governor Matthew Mead. Um, that was issued in, or implemented back in 2008. And that plan has proven to be very successful. In fact, the sage grouse population in Wyoming has been stabilized and in certain instances in certain areas is, uh, is increasing. We think that plan would be an excellent fit uh, here in the state of Montana. And uh, we, like Gary has already stated, we think um, that a local state conservation plan would, uh, would be far more beneficial to both economic development and to the preservation of sage grouse here in the state. That Wyoming plan was uh, approved by the uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and was also um, supported by the Bureau of Land Management. Um, so we support a very similar plan here in Montana. There's a draft plan uh, that the governor will consider and we encourage him to, to uh, consider that plan without further restrictions. One of the restrictions uh, that, that really stands out is a restriction in regards to uh, what's known as the buffer area around lek. So lek is uh, an active breeding ground for the sage grouse. The Wyoming plan calls for uh, the lek to have a non-surface occupancy uh, buffer around it um, of 0.6 miles. The Montana plan calls for a buffer zone of one mile. And we do think that's workable. Um, as Gary stated, there's some restrictions in there that, that, uh, that are concerning to us. We do think we can work with that. But just as a point of reference, a one mile of electric distribution power line in, in Montana, a single phase line, on average for co-ops is somewhere in the neighborhood between fifteen dollars and $20,000 a mile. So for every uh, additional restriction or increase in um, the size of buffer zones and that sort of thing, um, there is real costs that need to be passed on to the member. So we think there's a balance here uh, that will work. We, we applaud the governor for his, uh, his desire for a local conservation plan, and uh, we encourage him to stand pat against uh, pressure for further restrictions. Thank you. So it sounds as if you support the plan as it is, but you're just concerned that it may be changed to become more restrictive? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I mean, there are some, like I alluded to at the outset there, we might need some minor adjustments in it to make it a little more flexible, but, but generally uh, we, we support the plan as it's written. You know, and that, you know, the plan when it was first to propose, it was very, very uh, restricted on some of the initial drafts. But since then, it's we worked out some of the problems with it, and we think we can 
like Brandon said, we think we can make it work. Still going to be tough, but we think we can make it work. So you talked about how you want to adopt one of those two minor changes. Um, in particular, what, what minor changes do you feel like you support the title of adopting the What minor changes will be different in comparison to what's already happening in the state? Uh, you mean what is, uh, what do we want? Right, like specifically, what is it that you want? Uh, like, do you want to adopt the minor change? Like, well, I mean, the power line provisions, we like the way that those are written because they are um, power lines aren't are getting built that need to be built, but the sage grouse is being protected. Um, Brandon mentioned that 0 0.60 buffer. You know, that's what we would have liked. Montana draft has one mile buffer around those lecks. That's not really what we wanted. There's some additional restrictions in the Montana plan for power lines that Wyoming doesn't have. But like I said, it's got some flexibility the way it's worded. Uh, it has the ability, for example, for uh, the, uh, has authorizes the creation of a state oversight team that's going to look at each proposed project on a case-by-case -case basis and give some consideration to uh, uh, you know allowing development in certain areas so isn't there some special management areas too there's some some special management <coughs> thank you there's yeah. some special management areas that where there's you know intense economic activity now such as um, you know so mining or oil and gas where those are going to be managed a little different those are core areas but we managed a little different than than the other core areas, if that makes sense. So, so. Uh, yeah, so there's some good flexibility in the Montana plan. We're just concerned that, that further restrictions yeah. uh, are not implemented in the plan. It, as, as the draft is today, mm -hmm. we can make it work. Yeah. Um, if it gets more restrictive, that's an issue. And that's that's going to be uh, you know, not, not just a problem for the electric cooperative itself, but for the ratepayers. Yeah, again, we're, you know, we're not for profit utilities, so we're not talking here about whether we're going to get to make profits or not. We're, we're talking about being able to deliver affordable power to our people. So, so do you support the, um, you'd rather have the 0.6 mile buffer? Yeah, we'd rather have it, but like I said, we're willing, we're willing to live with the, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's uh, really realistic to, you know, the way things are headed uh, with this uh, plan in Montana to expect them to go back to to uh, point six. I mean, that, that they're under a lot of pressure. The governor's under a lot of pressure to do something more restrictive than Wyoming. We understand that, so we're saying, okay, you can. We're, we'll be willing to try to work with something that's more restrictive, but just have some flexibility in there so we can uh, can get the power lines built or maintained that we need to. So, what, will this impact? What's the impact? Yeah. Or recite them or mm -hmm. talk about that it, yeah, all the above, actually. Wh wh where we can and cannot build them uh, will be impacted. Um, there, there's even provisions in there regarding maintenance of the power line itself. Um, uh, additionally, existing power lines, there may have to be certain provisions added to power lines. Uh, for example, raptor protection so that they cannot uh, perch mm -hmm. out the power line itself mm -hmm. and so they cannot. Uh, um, prey on the sage grouse. There, there's there's quite a bit in there that uh, directly affects um, not just the construction of new power lines, but the operation and maintenance of existing power lines too. And the the Montana plan has some additional restrictions on general habitat, and we talked about core habitat. That's a primary focus because that's where the the the, the primary most of the population of sage grouse are living. But there's this general habitat. And, and uh, there's some additional restrictions in the Montana plan that aren't in the Wyoming plan. Again, they're not what we would have liked, but we are okay. We, we can make it work, we think. Can you give an example of a cost? I mean, what, what what's the cost here? What's the financial impact of the plan? 
think it just largely depends on the situation and, and, and uh, exactly, you know, if, it, if there's a request for service in a particular spot. You know, I mentioned the fact that just a single phase um, distribution power line is about fifteen to $20,000 a mile. If you have a buffer area um, of a mile, you have to build, say, an additional mile or half mile uh, to go around a, uh, um, a core area in order to serve a customer. That additional cost is, is goes directly to that customer. They have to pay for that power line. So, it, it, for example, instead of building a half mile to, to a customer uh, to serve them at, say, uh, $7,000, now I have to build a mile and a half to that customer. And so maybe it costs them $22,000, $25,000 to serve them. That's, and, and then additionally, you have all that additional line out there to maintain and operate. Pay property taxes on that line um, and you know, potential liability of additional line just out there in the countryside. So it would cost fifteen to 20000 per mile of line? A single phase distribution line. That's, that's correct. Serve a basic residential. Yeah, I mean, operation. it's just a single phase line that would serve, you know, a farm or ranch or residential. Uh, did you? I don't know if you understood when I talked about the at the outset there about um, how we have more at stake than other electric utilities, and Brandon talked about this, but I just wanted to make sure you understood that. Primary reason is you know we're, we have we have a lot more power line collectively than the state's largest investor owned utility. We've got Brandon gave you those numbers, but I don't know if you know it, but that those numbers was it fifty just short of fifty five thousand. That number collectively is more than three times larger than Northwestern Energy's distribution system. I, I can give you a specific example of our co op. We have eighteen thousand meters. We have over 2,500 miles of line to serve those 18,000 meters. Now, located where we are, we're just east of Billings, so from from our headquarters in Huntley to the west, we're very, very, very dense, very much like a typical investor-owned utility. But from from our headquarters to the east, we're about as rural as any other co-op across the state. In fact, the density, the meters per mile on our system is less than one. I have several areas out uh, east of Billings, north of the Yellowstone River, where I have six to eight miles of power line serving three meters. And so, I mean, there, there's, you know, there's, there's a potential of a huge impact here um, of having to, again, maintain and or operate the line a certain way and, um, you know, and build additional line to avoid certain areas. Have you guys calculated the cost? I mean, if the plan was implemented as is, what it would cost customers or utilities? No, we have not. I don't even know if it would be feasible to that'd do be, that. That'd be tough. It'd be easier to do on the maintenance side, but I guess you yeah. don't know what your future customers might be and yeah. where they might be located. Yeah, and it, you'd have to. What you'd have to do is go out and pinpoint every single lek and look at where you know what power lines are right there. And we know we've got power lines out there, but sure. we don't know how close or whatever. Yeah, so I think maintenance-wise, you could calculate that pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, you could do it, but but our guys, you know, I mean, like Brandon, he's, you know, he's on the ground every day with this co-op, so they know pretty well that what what's going to work and what's not going to work. 